Good evening, Tonal Community. How's everyone doing tonight? I am Kate, your, to your Tonal Community Manager. Let me know how you're doing in the comments tonight. I don't know about you, but I feel like this week has been a year. Uh, so tell me hello in the comments and then tell me what the best part of your day was today because I need a little something to pick me up. Um, I'm going to mark this as an announcement so everyone can join in. Hello, hello, hello. And tonight we're going to be talking about a subject that's uh, it's it's a common it's a hot topic in the community. So I'm really excited to dive into it. It is the infamous strength score, and we're going to be unveiling the puppeteer behind strength score, and we're going to be talking all about the recent enhancements that were made. Before we do that, I want to talk about some new content that is live on Tonal this week. We have new content from Therabody featuring the Theragun. I mean, this thing is magical. I absolutely love mine. You can find a warm up for your upper body and lower body. Your you warm up for upper body, lower body, warm up for and core. So we've got okay, we've got upper body warm up, cool down, lower body, warm up, cool down, core, warm up, cool down. So you can find everything you need to optimize your workout experience and your training on Tonal in our content library. If you search by recovery, I believe um, you can find that Theragun content. It is so good. It is juicy for your muscles and it counts towards leaderboard. I mean, what's better than that? I guess we'll find out if it counts towards strength score too. <laughs> Coach Liz also has a new program called Slow and Strong. It is a beginner friendly program. So if you are new to Tonal, if you're just trying to figure everything out, definitely check this program out. Um, she's gonna walk you through absolutely everything you need to know about Tonal and how to be successful on Tonal and how to build strength in the proper way. So those are my updates for you before I bring in Taylor and blowing the dust off my Theragun now. Exactly. Trust me, you're going to feel like jello afterwards. So my guest tonight is Taylor Stein. He is a data scientist at Tonal. Fun fact about Taylor, he started at Tonal the literal day that shelter in place orders went into effect. So unfortunately, I never had a chance to uh, overlap with him at the office, but I've gotten to know him very well on Slack and on Zoom, and he is fantastic. He has been hard at work on Strength Score since March. Um, and when he's not tweaking Strength Score or trying to make your tonal experience better, you can find him cycling, surfing, and watching any NBA game that's on, but he loves the Warriors. So please help me welcome Taylor Stein. Here we go. Hey, Taylor. Hey. <laughs> How's it going? Good. Thanks for joining tonight. How are you today? I'm doing great. How are you? I am good. I'm 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 feeling um, a lot looser. We had that ergonomics trainer come in <laughs> um, for our all hands and teach us how to actually work properly. And I've been doing his stretches, and I'm feeling feeling pretty good. Yeah, same. The micro breaks. <laughs> exactly. I've been standing. Yeah more too. You're supposed to stand 75% and sit 25%. I think I was doing the opposite of that. <laughs> I'm glad I tuned in. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us tonight. People have so many questions about strength score. People are talking about strength score all the time. I think I've slapped you maybe a million times since March with different conversations happening in the community about strength score. So if you posted about your strength score, there's a very good chance Taylor read about it as he was analyzing strength score to make these enhancements. So thank you for always responding to my numerous Slack messages. <laughs> of course, of course. Um, I was hoping that you could give us an overview of what strength score is for anyone who's new to Tonal, who is new to training on Tonal, um, or who maybe just had their install today and doesn't even know what the strength score is. So lay it out for us. What is strength score? Sure, absolutely. So for starters, um, strength score is a metric that is exclusive here at Tonal. It's not something you're gonna find if you necessarily like Google around for it, um, but it's really designed to be a tool to help you understand your strength. Um, and specifically, if you're getting stronger over time and how much stronger you are. Um, there's sort of been traditional ways to do this where you might you know, say, okay, my bench press is getting stronger, but my squat's getting a little bit stronger. And it may be hard to tell, um, especially if you're doing different uh, workouts that have different reps and different sets, it could be difficult. Um, so it's really designed to be this tool that Tonal members can use to evaluate their strength and track their progress over time. Um, and simply put, 
the strength score that you see today really represents how strong you are currently um, on your best day. And we have scores for your upper body, your lower body, your core, and we combine all of those to give you an overall score. Um, and in this latest version of strength score, we now have strength scores for individual muscle groups that make up those body regions. Awesome. Yeah, I, I, I was a trainer before uh, working at Tonal. And actually, you were too, right? You're I was. That's right. <laughs> yeah. um, and working with my clients, you know, we'd kind of base their progress on maybe how many push-ups they could do or how they're feeling or, you know, individual lifts. But it would have been so helpful if I had an overall strength, a score that I could, like, plot for them. And that's what Tonal does. It's, like, ultimate progress tracking that you can see. And so I love that. It's almost like a, like a game. It's yeah. really fun for our members. Yeah, absolutely. And so what were some of the, what were some of the issues you were seeing with strength score as it was um, that were popping up in the community that I would slap you about? <laughs> <everywhere>? <laughs> yeah. So I'd say strength score was definitely working right for folks that were getting stronger. Typically strength score went up. Um, but there were some areas for improvement. Um, there were three main areas that I tried to focus on after like observing uh, members' scores and reading comments in the community about how their scores were changing. Um, the first one is sort of a two-parter, right? It's We saw our members would have some uh, like really quick strength score decreases. Like their strength score would be, everything would be fine and dandy, and then it would drop down 50 points. And folks would wonder like, why did my strength score drop down? Um, it's not really, uh, indicative of your strength. Most people didn't really get 50 points weaker overnight. Um, and in addition, sometimes you'd have your strength score that was a bit stagnant, right? Like you may really quickly hit a plateau and then it's a bit flat. Um, so that was the first um, issue that we really set out to solve is how do we make strength score something that's more representative of your strength today um, and something that's a bit more dynamic and like respond is a bit more responsive to what you do on tonal. Um, so that was the first challenge, really figuring out how we get rid of the elusive six month cliff that we sort of talk about where people are like, something fell out of uh, the last six months. Um, how do we get rid of that? Um, the second thing that we were really focusing on is how did we uh, limit maybe fear that members have about trying new workouts or new programs, um, afraid that they're gonna try a new movement and it's gonna really impact their strength score. Um, we read that a handful of times and had to think about how we could redesign the algorithm so that it's okay to try new moves, it's okay to take the weight easy at the beginning um, and build up your strength over time as you become uh, comfortable with the movement. So that was sort of the second major piece. And then the third piece was trying to make strength score a bit uh, less opaque, right? You have your body region scores, like your upper body, your lower body, and your core, but it was a bit of a black box, right? Like you try things on tonal, you see what happens to your strength score. So we wanted to open up the black box a little bit more and give folks some visibility into um, not just their body regions, but individual muscle groups. So now you can see, you know, my strength score may be 500 from my upper body and I can see how my chest, my back, my shoulders, all my muscles in my upper body um, contribute to that overall score of 500. I think um, people were trying to make time machines to, to go back in time six months. Right. <laughs> Yeah, time machines. Which move? <laughs> yeah. Um, Mariana said the six month cliff is gone. Michelle Kenyon Yan, you can stop replying to those posts. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle, so much for explaining <laughs> that to maybe hundreds of people. <laughs> so we yeah. appreciate you. Um, but yeah, and not only did you make the, the user experience better, of you can actually see which specific muscle groups are lagging or advancing or making it more actionable, but it's um, it's more indicative of what people's strength is actually doing in their body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Trying a new move doesn't make you weaker. It actually makes you stronger in a new way. And so you guys really just made it more accurate to what's actually happening. So I'm really appreciative of that. <laughs> oh, awesome, we are too. <laughs> um, I would love to know what the process is like for you to make these enhancements, like how long you've been working on it, what kind of data analytics did you do? We have some um, self-proclaimed data nerds and data geeks in this group. They love to dive into the nitty gritty of it. So 
I'll kind of zone out for this part, but yeah. <laughs> tell them all about the data and the numbers. <laughs> yeah, so there's a lot that goes into it. Um, as Kate mentioned, it's something that I've been working on with the team since I joined back in March. Um, so all the way from April, really digging into it until now, focusing on how do we take this algorithm that we currently have and how do we tweak it um, and make it better? And as far as like the the data that we're looking at, some of that is looking at our member strength score data and trying to evaluate where we currently are. So I mentioned we have some of those big drops that we had in the previous version. So trying to first understand how frequently does that happen, right? Like we see comments on Facebook every now and then, but how indicative of that is for every member on Tonal? Is that rare or is that common? Um, so that's some of the data that we look at is how our user scores changing um, over time and um, what does it typically look like? And that sort of sets the stage for like the problem that we have at hand and what we're looking to solve. Um, once we sort of understand the problem that we're trying to solve, it really then comes down to just testing. Um, we brainstorm different changes that we can make to the algorithm, different ways we can approach sort of solving this um, complex problem, right? Like if we were giving uh, our members, if we were giving you strength scores after a single workout, um, it's fairly rudimentary, right? There's only so much we have to look at and we can score those things and give you a score but we're being a bit more ambitious and we wanna give you scores for your entire lifetime on Tonal and give you your current score now based on everything that we've seen you do on Tonal, um, whether that's the last two weeks or the last two years on Tonal. Um, so it really comes down to just brainstorming different ways that we can solve that problem and testing them. Um, once you know we do some testing and we see how the new algorithm affects member scores, we then do some internal testing, right? And Kate was a part of this where um, we may have an algorithm that we like and we wanna see how it behaves. Um, it may make sense like on paper, but we wanna see, does it behave in a way that is um, what we'd expect? So we have ways of sharing it inside of Tonal where we can send it to someone like Kate and I can send her her new strength score before it's live. Um, and she can tell me if it seems to be working or not. And that helps us um, really in the final stage, which is, really fine tuning the algorithm. Um, it starts out as this very like quantifiable, very um, easy to define algorithm. And by the end, you sort of get a feel for it. And we can say things like, it feels a bit too responsive. It feels a bit too slow, um, things like that. And you sort of get a feel for it. And those are the final tweaks that we tend to make at the end, which are some fine tuning to really make sure that it's responsive where it needs to be. And when I do something on tonal where my score really should go up, it goes up. Um, but it's not so responsive that we have a score that's, you know, going all over the place up and down after every single workout. So it's a bit of a balancing act. Yeah, I think my my strength score has done a few backflips during during COVID. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I just wanted to make the point that people are constantly trying to game strength score and to figure out exactly how it works. And if I do this, it's going to do this. And uh, what you're saying is that there's a lot of factors that go into it. It's it's way more complicated now than just saying this, this, and this equals this. So right. um, I'm excited to see what what logic people come up with right. in the community over the next couple months that they that, that they think is happening in strength score. And, and I'll send you the posts. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And I think also that is like, I think an important point is strength score. It's I think at the core, it really is just a, a tool that we want uh, you all to use to be able to evaluate your strength. And I think um, the more we're able to look at it as a number that tells me if I'm getting stronger or not, the better. I'm um, sure we can we can all try things and like try different things to get it to go up and treat it like a game. But I think the more we all use it as a tool to evaluate our strength, um, the more the more you're going to get out of it. Yeah, and definitely looking at the overall trends instead of the day-to-day -day point by point decrease or increase. Like really looking at taking a step back and looking like, okay, yeah, my upper body's gotten this much stronger, my lower body or overall, and I'm feeling this way, I think is really important not to get like so bogged down in the in the details of, of string score. Yeah, absolutely. I think we we like to think of it similar to something like a scale, right? Like you may weigh yourself every day, um, but it'd be a little bit, I don't know, not not the smartest thing to do to, to fret over like a half pound here or a half pound there. And it's really more interesting to see like overall, how is my trend looking? Right. Totally. They're, they're having a contest in the comments of whether or not I blink. So <laughs> I will tell you, I have a bottle of eye drops, everyone right here because my eyes are so dry, <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. Um, Taylor, are you ready to bust some myths? Yes, let's do it. Good. Okay. So um, Taylor and I collected, I think we have 13 myths. 
uh, common myths that we've seen come up over the last year or so. And we're going to we're going to tell you if they're true or false. So get ready in the comments. Um, if you think it's true, put true. If you think it's false, put false. And then Taylor will tell us. So first myth. Oh, and I want to let everyone know that we are going to get to questions at the end. OK, first myth. My strength score will change depending on whether the community gets stronger or weaker. So give everyone a few seconds to say if they think this is true or false. There's a little bit of a lag on Facebook, but uh, let's see. True or false, my strength score will change depending on whether the community gets stronger or weaker. So is your strength score based on the community? We've got one for false. Timothy said false. Anyone else? Ooh, people are, are a little nervous to guess. We've got Dale saying <laughs> false, Anne saying false. All right, the people have spoken. Russell says false. Taylor? It's false. We have some smart members on here. <laughs> They're correct. All right, so explain this one to us. Yeah, so strength score is designed so that it's independent of our broader user base, right? Like we're able to score how strong every member is on every movement, which scores your muscle groups, which scores your body regions. And we designed it in a way so that it's independent of um, our entire user base. We don't want it to be something where uh, you know, a hundred really strong members just buy a tonal and suddenly my strength score goes down. That doesn't really seem fair to members. So we wanted to make it so that it was um, sort of normalized across the board and it was independent of how strong um, our, our member base is. Yeah, that makes it like more personal to me. I wonder how strong I am, not all you. Right. I know you're strong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, myth number two. Uh, my strength score is based on my gender, age, height, and weight. True or false? Everyone in the comments, let us know. The myth is that my strength score is based on my gender, height, or weight, and age. True or false? <laughs> Matthew said, I drops. Does Kate cheat on her strength score too? No, I do not cheat on my strength score. There's no cheating, Taylor. That's another myth we got to bust. Yeah. Um, okay, Brian said false. Susan said false. Richie said true. So this is the myth is that, uh, the potential myth is that strength score is based on gender, age, height, or weight. Russell's saying true, Anna's saying false. Who's right? Is Brian right with false or is Richie right with true? It is false. False, okay, so tell us. Yeah, so similar to how we don't want your strength score to be dictated by how strong our members are, um, we leave out any sort of normalizing that you might wanna do by uh, gender or age or level or height or weight or anything like that. Um, it's a bit of a slippery slope. Right. If we started um, normalizing user strength scores by gender, for example, it then probably makes sense that we should do it by age. And if we do it by age, we may have to do it by height and weight and BMI and all sorts of things. And it sort of uh, becomes really complex and I think makes it actually harder a bit to make comparisons. We're sort of taking on and the algorithm's taking on more assumptions and it's making um, these comparisons that maybe not everyone wants to make. So we look at it as, um, really using the same rubric for scoring every member, no matter their age, gender, height, weight, anything. And if our members want to be able to compare themselves to each other and sort of do their own normalizing, like if by you know comparing myself to my dad, he may say, my strength score is 100 points lower than you, but I'm 65, then I'm gonna let my dad do that. Um, but we sort of leave the the normalizing up to, up to our member. Okay, all right, cool, that makes sense, that makes sense. Okay, myth number three. Potential myth number three, because I don't want to give away if it's true or false or not. Um, trying a new move will likely lower my strength score. Trying new moves will lower my strength score. True or false? In the comments, let us know what you think. <laughs> Rochelle asked if she can get a handicap. <laughs> uh, um, ooh, people were surprised by that last one. Let's see, true or false? My strength score, trying a new move will lower my strength score. We've got some falses coming in, some trues coming in. Susan said false. Brian said true. Rochelle said false. I think if y'all read the blog post, <laughs> answers in there. <laughs> Neil said true. Tess said false. Neil said true. This one is really divided. This one's getting the people going. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Taylor, give it to yeah. us. Great. We'll try a new move, decrease the strength score in this updated algorithm. That is false as well. <laughs> All right. All right. From the horse's mouth himself. 
<laughs> no, it's still green. Yeah, so that is not true. Um, previously, when you tried a new move, it would often be accompanied by your score going down. Um, a lot of this had to do with the weight that we we're giving you, right? We're giving members a weight that is a bit easier than we think they can do when they try something for the first time. And it makes sense, right? Like from a personal training perspective, if we're giving someone a movement for the very first time, I'm not going to say, let me give you a weight that you're going to struggle to do 10 reps of. We're going to give you something that's a bit lighter and a bit easier so that you can get acclimated to the movement and how it feels and which muscles you should be using for the movement. Um, so knowing this, we've made some changes to the algorithm so that we place more importance on how strong you are in movements that you've done more frequently. When you've only done a move, you've tried it for the first time, maybe you only do three sets of a move in your first workout with it, it's gonna have a very, very small level of importance on your overall strength score compared to those moves that you've done, you know, dozens or hundreds of times. Um, from our perspective, like the algorithm, we see, you know, if you've only done a movement two or three times, the odds that we've captured like your absolute true strength for that movement is a bit lower than if we've seen you do it 100 or 200 times we feel more confident in our evaluation of your strength um so we do a little bit of waiting as far as the movements go there that's a good point um and especially i want to point out that some people come into tonal and they say oh you know i did the assessment and my weights they feel too easy in their first couple workouts and i just want to make the point that that is on purpose so that you can on ramp without getting completely crushed so that you can <laughs> walk the next day because you want you to be stronger. Uh, so uh, just give it time, give it time with those new moves. It's there by design. It's there to keep you nice and healthy. So, um, and just to recap, trying new moves will not lower your strength score in the new algorithm. Lewis is mad that I didn't specify that. I'm very sorry, Lewis. These are all about the new algorithm. Okay, let's see, what's our next one? Are we ready? Let's do okay. It. True or false? Lowering the weight on a final set of a movement will not impact strength score. So lowering the weight on a final set of a movement will not impact strength score. So say you're going through go big or go home and you've done a million reps and it's your last set, you lower that weight. True or false? It will impact. It will not impact strength score. So there's a lot of double negatives here. Let's see what people guess. If you followed that, guess true or false. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Brian says true. Russell says false. Aaron says true. I'm going to read it one more time. Lowering the weight on a final set of a movement will not impact strength score. True or false. Neil says true. Rochelle says true. Russell says true. Tell us, Taylor, true or false? The answer is true. True. Okay. Explain this one. Yeah. So as I mentioned earlier, strength scores designed to evaluate you and give you a score that represents how strong you are currently at your strongest. And as part of this, we look at all the sets that you do for a particular movement in a workout. And we really, all we care about is which set um, was the strongest out of those. So if you're doing go big or go home and you've done six sets of front squats and you're like, I can't take it on the seventh one. You want to I think it's eight. Is it eight? Oh, man. And you want to dial it down just a little bit. You're more than allowed to, right? Like you still are going to have a best set that had the, the highest amount of strength earlier in the workout. And that's the one that the strength score algorithm is going to care about. Um, you know, you proved to us maybe 20 minutes earlier that you could do it. So there's no reason for the algorithm to really hone in on that last set where you lowered the weight and say, like, oh, I don't think they're as strong as they are. Um, so we all we care about is the, the best set for each movement in a workout. I think everyone doing go big or go home just breathed a really big collective sigh of relief. <laughs> <laughs> so if, you're, if you feel like your form is is maybe struggling, you're getting a lot of form cues, something's hurting, don't be afraid to dial back that weight just a little bit because you're worried about your strength score. Your strength score will not be impacted is what I'm hearing from Taylor. So, yep. all right, next one. Completing a beginner workout when I've previously done advanced workouts will not lower my strength score. True or false? I'm going to repeat it again. Completing a beginner workout when I've previously done advanced workouts will not impact or lower my strength score. Let's see what the people say. Aaron said, great insight. Just started go big or go home today. Good luck to you, my friend, Aaron. Wait till day three. You're going to love it. <laughs> Rochelle said, skipping the last set from now on. Will skipping a set <laughs> strength score? 
No, but you'll just get that like really annoying work incomplete workout summary that I think really triggers people. So yeah. <laughs> um, Shelby said true. Anne said true. Tess said true. 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 All right. Tell us, Taylor. Everyone's right. The answer All right. is true. Everyone's <laughs> yeah. around the applause for that one. Yeah. All right. So explain this one. This one's pretty simple. We, when we're evaluating your strength on various movements, we don't pay attention at all to what workout it is. Um, we don't necessarily, if this is a workout you designed yourself using like the custom workout builder, um, or if this is go big or go home, or if it's a beginner workout, we uh, sort of don't, we disregard what the level is. We evaluate your strength. So you could technically do beginner workouts for your entire life on tonal and still see your strength score increase and improve and maybe you know, get to the millions. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Maybe not the millions part, but yeah, I agree with the, the first half. <laughs> no one's gotten to the millions yet, but I think uh, uh, I think some people are close. We've got Patty is pretty close, Patio Furniture. I don't know his real name because his Facebook name is Patio Furniture, and I don't think that's real. If you're watching, <laughs> tell us. Um, and uh, William Santo might be close, and Michelle T might be close. Um, okay, here we go. Completing a workout that is 100% off tonal will decrease my strength score. So completing a workout that is 100% off tonal will decrease my strength score. So we're talking bar, Pilates, family fitness, um, kickboxing, boxing, yoga. Completing a workout that is 100% off tonal will decrease my strength score. Let's see what the people have to say. Shelby says false. Anne says false. Rochelle says false. Susan says false. Are they right, Taylor? Everyone's right again. <laughs> Amazing. And that's similar logic to the last one, right? We're, we're not evaluating the workout. We're evaluating your strength on the movements. Right. And if the workout's all, you know, if it's a yoga workout, we're not capturing any information about how strong you are from the yoga workout. So there's nothing for us to, to really use. And there's no reason for us to change your score for doing that. But I have a hunch that if you do a lot of yoga workouts, Pilates, Pilates, different ways to get stronger, you're going to see your strength score go up because you are going to get stronger on your lifts. That's just that's just a hunch that I have from my from my own uh, experience. <laughs> have you tried the Pilates, Taylor? It is no joke. <laughs> I haven't done it yet, mainly because I'm a little bit scared to try it. <laughs> I was scared for about a month, and I know why I was, and it was a valid, <laughs> valid fear. <laughs> but it's so good. Okay, next one. This is one that I saw a lot before COVID, but it's bound to come up again. So let's address it now. My vacation away from tonal is going to cause my strength score to go down. True or false? My vacation away from tonal is going to cause my strength score to go down. Let's see what they say. <laughs> Wait, follow up to that myth question. Will doing off tonal workouts add to your strength score? In the long run, John, because you're going to get stronger. So not a direct impact, but as a result. I would say true. Um, all right, the people are saying false, false, false. Anne says she wants a pain tolerance score. Rochelle says <laughs> false. Russell says false. All right, Taylor, are they right again? Yep, the answer is smart false. Community. Strong yeah. and smart. <laughs> They're just too smart. But yeah, the answer is false. Um, you can take a week away from total, maybe on your vacation, and not have to worry about your strength score going down. Um, when we were redesigning the algorithm, we had other versions that were a bit more proactive, where it was making assumptions about your strength, and we ditched that so that the new algorithm here is entirely reactive. So if you don't show anything different to tonal, your strength score is not going to change. Um, I can't make any guarantees about your streaks, though. And I'm currently about to lose my streak, so. Oh, no. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry to hear that. I'm almost, I'm about to, not to brag, not to rub it in, but I'm about to hit my year streak. I think oh. <laughs> well, I'm starting over next week. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to ask a follow-up question to that. If someone's away from their tonal for like a year, will their strength score be impacted? So their strength score, when they come back to tonal, right, it's still going to stay the same. Um, the algorithm is going to be a bit more responsive the longer it's been, right? Like it's a little bit more curious about your strength if you've been away for a year. Um, and if someone's been away for that long, I think we recommend people do another calibration workout to get their starting weights, um, just to make everything smoother from there. And if they do another calibration workout, then their strength score is going to adjust from there. 
Yeah. So if they've been doing like strongman competitions, it could go up. But if they've been injured for a year, it might go down based on what their actual strength is. Makes sense. Exactly. Okay. Here we go. This is a fun one. This is this is about a new feature that we have. If I replace a move for a more challenging move variation, my strength score will increase. So say your program has goblet squat and you replace it for front squat, that is going to cause your strength score to increase. Um, true or false, everyone. I'm going to read it one more time. If I replace a move with a more challenging variation of that movement, my strength score will increase. True or false? <laughs> Let's see, we've got false. True. Uh oh, they're divided. True. Causing controversy here. <laughs> Nina says false. Anne says false. So we've got three falses, two trues. Neil says true. It is neck and neck. Lewis says false. Taylor, help us out here. Susan <laughs> says true. Oh man, I'm stressed. Oh man. What have we done? <laughs> the answer is false. So false. making a decision that's you know going to result in a harder workout, it's, it's just going to do that. It's going to result in the workout being a little bit harder, a little bit more challenging. Um, but like I said, we're still just evaluating your strength on a movement by movement basis. So if it called for goblet squats and you swap it out for front squats, from the strength score algorithm's perspective, all we're doing is now we're just going to make a slight adjustment to your strength when it comes to your front squat as opposed to your goblet squat. Um, Granted, you you may get a better workout if it's a harder variation, um, or you may get an easier workout if you're uh, replacing it with an easier move. But um, it changing a movement doesn't like directly affect your strength score. And John says, will the strength score go down if you replace with an off tonal movement, or I'm going to say an easier movement? No, the answer is no. Logic. Yeah, no. So don't be afraid to replace moves if you need to. If you need to accommodate for an injury or something's just not working in your body, don't be afraid to replace a move because you think your strength score is going to go down. It will not be impacted. <laughs> All right. 100%. Next, <laughs> put a little pin on that. <laughs> All right. Um, ooh, okay. Number 10. We're already at number 10. Hitting a PR in a workout will increase my strength score. True or false? Hitting a PR, a personal record, when you get the little the little loop and the little arrow, and it's so fun and nice. Hitting a PR in a workout will increase my strength score. True or false? Let's see. Let the answer. Be. To clarify, it was a, a strength PR, right? Strength PR, yeah. True. We've got one true. Aaron says true. Russell says true. I'm looking at the answer. I'm cheating. Yale, Dale says yes. I think that's true. Susan says true. Wow, we didn't get them on this one. Tell us, Taylor. <laughs> the answer is true. True. Um, right, like from, from the algorithm's point of view, if you hit a new PR, you're showing the algorithm that you're stronger. It's going to increase your score on that movement, which should then increase your score in your muscle group and then your body region. Um, granted, you could have a case where you make a very minor PR, maybe one pound, and you may, you know, my shoulders may become a little bit stronger. And when it comes to my upper body, it may not actually show, right? Because we show your score as like an entire number. Um, but behind the scenes, yes, your strength score is going to go up. Okay. So that's a really good distinction to make. So I know that, you know, I'm going to see a post in two days that says, I got a PR, I got three PRs, but my strength score didn't go up. So you're saying that just because you get a PR doesn't mean that it will definitely go up, but it's going to because different moves and different body parts are weighted differently. Is that right? So it might, you said behind the scenes, it goes up. Explain. Well, I can prove myself. Yeah. <laughs> so essentially, right. If you make a very, very small PR, um, it's going to help your strength score without a doubt. It's not going to hurt your strength score whatsoever. Um, it just could be that it could be so small and um, your score is maybe at 500 in your upper body and it's just not enough to tip it over to 501, but you make another one pound increase in your PR and then it may jump up to 501. So if it stays stagnant after PR, that could be what's happening. It's just like a bit of a rounding error almost. Okay, so in the background, there's like decimals to our strength scores. Oh yeah. But we get the, oh, oh I didn't know that. Yeah. Know that. Learn something new. Okay, here we go, next one. Okay, this is kind of like a follow-up to that one. Hitting volume PRs and power PRs will increase my strength score. True or false? 
So everyone, we just talked about strength PRs. Now we're talking about volume PRs and power PRs. Volume PRs are when you get a lot of volume in a block and power PRs are, are when you like the speed, it's really fast and powerful. You're laughing at the way I'm <laughs> describing power. Not at all, no, 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 no. I'm gonna get some some flack on Slack for that one. Um, hitting volume PRs and power PRs will increase my strength score. True or false? Let's see. Anne says false. Um, Brian says he wants the decimals. <laughs> That's gonna be the next <laughs> Back Friday request. <laughs> <laughs> Shelby said false. Russell said true. Aaron said false. Stuart said false. Brian said false. So a little bit more, a little bit of division here. Rochelle said false. Neil said true. Taylor, tell us, is it true or false? The answer is false. So strength score, as it implies, right? You make a strength PR, your strength score should go up. Um, for things like volume, if that's measured over a block. Um, you could hit a volume PR just by having a lot of sets in a block or by having a high number of reps. Um, doesn't necessarily mean you're stronger. Same thing goes for power. So power is speed times force. So essentially the weight, yeah, the weight times the speed. Um, so if I'm doing... 10 reps of bench press and I use 30 pounds. And this time when I do 30 pounds for 10 reps, I do it a little, my, one of my reps is a bit faster. All my reps are a bit more powerful. I may hit a, a power PR, um, but my strength on that movement isn't changing, so. So we're evaluating yeah. pure strength, not endurance, not power, not speed, not agility, not anything else, pure strength. Exactly. Score. Okay, exactly. Maybe those things in the future, I don't know. <laughs> 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 All right, we've got two more. Last two. Okay, turning on advanced weight modes such as change, chains, eccentric, or smart flex does not impact my strength score. Let's say that again. Turning on advanced dynamic weight modes, excuse me, such as chains, eccentric, or smart flex does not impact my strength score. So, you know, eccentric adds weight to the eccentric phase, chains on the concentric, smart flex dynamically adjusts every millisecond to match the strength, cur strength curve. So turning on advanced weight, dynamic weight modes, such as chains, eccentric, or smart flex does not impact my strength score, true or false. We've got a true. We've got a false. We've got a true. <laughs> We've got a false. Oh no, oh no. They are divided. We've got another true. It's coming in true, false, true, false, true, false. I'm gonna give them another second to, to think <laughs> on this one. Dynamic weight modes, do they impact strength score? Taylor, tell us. So it's dynamic, <laughs> dynamic weight modes do impact strength score. All right. It's a bit tricky because there's a negative in the question about not impacting, but. That's true. So they do, <laughs> they do we're making it hard on some of these people. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it does impact strength score. So one way to think about it is in that example, maybe I'm my bench press is 30 pounds for 10 reps. And I've done that and that's my weight and that's my strength. If on my next workout, I do bench press again for 10 reps and I have the, the weight set at 30 pounds and maybe I turn on chains mode. So it's getting a little bit harder at the top of the rep. The strength score algorithm does take that into mind. It knows that it's a bit harder to do it the same weight, the same reps, but with chains on, for example, than with chains off. So we do take that into account when we factor in and calculate your strength on a movement. So um, I recommend turning on dynamic weight modes. It's a great way to get a better workout and strength score makes note of it. So you shouldn't have any concerns about um, worrying that, you know, maybe you may have to lower the weight a pound if you're turning chains on or something like that. But at the end of the day, it does take it into account. So even though that base weight lowers when you turn on a dynamic weight mode, it's it's not going to knock your strength score. It's actually going to help your strength score. Exactly. You'll see when the base weight may go down and you'll see chains of six pounds or something like that. We make note of the amount of chains that you're using, for example. I'd be curious to see how many workouts have added dynamic weight mo modes tomorrow after this talk. Yeah. <laughs> you can look I'll it also check it out. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Last one. Tonal is constantly tweaking and refining the strength score algorithm behind the scenes, which impacts member strength scores regularly. So I'm going to read that again, true or false. Um, Tonal is constantly tweaking and refining the strength score algorithm behind the scenes, which impacts member strength scores regularly. So is Taylor sitting at his desk, kind of pulling on the puppet strings, impacting your strength scores day to day? What do you think? Do you think he's doing that or not? I don't know. It's like a shady character to me. <laughs> <laughs> We've got um, true, 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 true. 
True. They don't trust you, Taylor. <laughs> I see. I see one false. <laughs> You're holding on to that false, yeah. Michelle. Russell says true. <laughs> Neil says true. False. All right, Taylor. What are you the doing over there? <laughs> the answer is false. So <laughs> we do all of the fine tuning and the tweaking like prior to this release, right? Like the last month or two was all the minor changes that we're making. Um, we know that. Strength score should, like I mentioned, should be a tool to evaluate your strength. And we're really cautious when it comes to making changes to the algorithm. Um, that's why we made a big deal about this announcement. We made a blog post about it. And we told our members that it's coming because we know that it, it means a lot to our members. Um, so we really have to be careful when we are making changes to it. So we're, we're cautious when we do it. And we are behind the scenes. We're checking to make sure that um, we're, you know, when we do make a change like this change to the algorithm, we're doing everything that we can to keep our users String score is about, you know, our members scores just where they were uh, as best as we can. And we're not really back there just pulling the puppet strings just to see what happens. <laughs> Brian <laughs> says he doesn't believe you and it's true so that he can blame you for when his score goes down. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so just, just to be clear, um, if we make any updates to the algorithm that impact our members, we're going to tell you, we're going to be very clear about it. We're going to send out emails. We're going to do a tunnel talk. We're going to do the whole thing. Um, so you have simulations that you run and you can see what someone's score would change if you did these changes, which you've done to mine many times, but it's never actually changed on my app or on the trainer. And so exactly. if you're at home, don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> He's not back there just messing with you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, thank you everyone for playing. That was fun. Um, I, I wonder who won, I didn't tally that, but um, we're all winners, right? Okay, let's, uh, let's talk about, um, you know, I told people not to game the system, but if they were to game the system or want to game the system, just can you give us some pointers on what are, what's the best way to make our strength score go up? Yeah, so I think um, one of the best approaches is really having a well-rounded approach to strength training on tonal. Um, like, as I mentioned, we're looking at all of the movements on, the, on tonal um, to evaluate your strength and those movements all belong to a muscle group and that muscle group belongs to a body region. So if I'm focusing on improving my strength maybe in my upper body. And all I'm doing is focusing on my shoulders, for example. I'm just really changing one single aspect of that. And I'm gonna have to make serious gains on my shoulders to really move the needle on my upper body score. So I think one of the biggest things is focusing on a like, holistic approach across all muscle groups in your body to really try to make smaller improvements across every muscle group rather than trying to make massive improvements on one of them. Um, I think it'd be better from a you know, fitness standpoint, not overtraining certain muscles and staying well balanced and uh, making progress across the board to bring your strength score up overall. Dang, it's so simple. We wanted some yeah. secrets. It's just like work yeah. out a little more and try, yeah. you know, have a well-rounded approach. It's so boring. <laughs> yeah, no secrets. <laughs> <laughs> well, dang. All right. Um, okay. And like we talked about before, uh, we're really looking at the, the big picture of strength score and not focusing or obsessing over those tiny little one, two, three, four, five point increases to decreases, taking a step back, looking at the overall trends is really the, the most important thing and something that we really wanted to convey to people about strength score. Exactly. Okay, can you, um, can you tell us what might be in the works for strength score in the future? Like anywhere we're taking this metric? I don't know. We yeah. always want to know the secrets on Total Talk and try to give it to them as much as I can. <laughs> <laughs> so we're always keeping an eye on our algorithms, right? For something like Strength Score, we're monitoring to see how it's doing, make sure that um, it's doing its job and it's doing its job well. Um, we are also listening to the community, right? Like we shared our benchmarking feature that allows um, you all to be able to see how your Strength Score stacks up against other members. Um, and that's something that I think we are really excited about and we see that a lot of members are excited about. And I think we're going to take a closer look at that and look into maybe other ways that we can provide even more detailed um, comparisons. Cause I know people are really looking for that. And I, I think that making uh, you know male female comparisons is hopefully the first step, but we're gonna be spending some time looking at um, some other ways that we can maybe give more detailed views to our members. I love that. And then, so you've been working on strength score as long as 
COVID's been happening, essentially. Um, so while other people were learning to make bread, you were learning to make strength score better. Um, <laughs> what are you going to be focusing on now that these enhancements are out? Other than, you know, the, the tweaks you just mentioned or more research into strength score, things like that. What else is going to have your time at Tonal? Yeah, so I think uh, a lot of it comes down to things that if I'm doing my job well, a lot of our members don't even notice, right? It's just a lot of the magic behind the scenes. So I think this comes down to things like, for example, recommendations. So looking into ways that knowing our members and knowing your past workout history, the coach, maybe you have a coach preference, maybe you have a time of day, maybe whatever preference you have, I'm starting to look into ways that we can um, tailor the experience more to each individual member and have you know some of our recommendations be even better for our members. That's that's sort of what I'm looking at working on uh, in the in the near term. Well, Peter would like you to work on automatic moving arms. So mm. add that to the roadmap, your yeah. to-do list tomorrow. I love yeah. it. Exciting things. Very fun. Okay, I have one final question for you, and then we're going to get into members' questions. I've seen come some come through, so I'm going to try to find some ones um, that we can answer. Okay, question. What does it mean for you, Taylor, to be your strongest? That is a tough as I, I mentioned, I think this is the hardest question on this entire uh, Data scientists love the touchy-feely questions. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, to me, um, my background, I meant to spend a couple of years um, as a personal trainer working on, you know, athletes from all sorts of different backgrounds. And I think it really comes down to, for you as an individual, what it is that matters to you, right? You could be someone who is in high school training to make uh, your football team and try to make it to college and being, you know, having incredibly strong lower body and upper body is really, really important to you. I mean, you need to be as powerful as possible. Or maybe you are, you know, you're a grandma and you want to be able to lift your grandson up. Um, whatever it is, I think it's really just taking a second to think about what it is that matters to you um, and then figuring out what steps you need to take to get there um, and, and getting there um, through strength training, through meditation, through yoga, whatever it is, um, just like taking advantage of all the things that you can to, to reach your goals. Well, thank you for helping all of us be our strongest. <laughs> um, now back to more data science questions for you. <laughs> Happy place. Okay, we have a question. Um, I can't see names on here, so I apologize if I don't say these names, but I'm gonna show it on the screen. I'm doing a rehab program with Coach Liz, which has me working out on one side, but not the other in a movement. Does progress on the one side factor into my strength score or does it not because I didn't do both sides? That's a great question. That's a good question. That's a tricky one. Um, so it actually will factor into your score. Um, the fact if you're just doing movements, um, like a two-sided movement, you're just doing it on one side, we will pay attention to your strength from that one side. Um, granted the algorithm would, would sort of like to have information on both sides, um, but if you're just doing it on one side, it, it will definitely factor into your strength score. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna try to hide that. I always say every time I need a producer on here. Okay, um, question I think that we kind of got into, but we're just gonna, we're just gonna put it up here. Is it possible, let me see if I can find it on here. Sorry about that. There we go. Okay. Is it possible to sort your benchmark by your age category? I'd love to see how I stack up against other men that are similar age. Like, can a 55 year old woman see how she performed compared to other women in their fifties and not a woman? The men's, the men's strength score is normally distributed while the women's is skewed. That skewed distribution may be due to age. This is from Justin Patter, who is um, finishing his PhD, I believe, which is why. <laughs> sounds like that. another fellow yeah fellow data person connect on that <laughs> yeah let's see so there's a lot to to get at there um currently we can make benchmark comparisons against gender so you can compare yourself to all tonal members female members male members um and i think age is an interesting way that we may look at providing more detail to members to be able to make those comparisons um either in their own age range or make comparisons cross gender, cross age ranges. I think those are all interesting things that we're looking into how we might be able to do it. Okay, thank you. Okay, here's another one. I love this one. Where does strength score end? What's the there, limit? There, the limit does not exist. There's no, <laughs> there's Every no time limit. we get this, com this question in the community, I always put a Lindsay Lohan gif. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There is, so there's technically no upper limit to it. Uh, people are probably going to hit some physical restraints as far as uh, what it could be, but we don't know. That's um, sort of the fun of it. That was from um, that was from Brian. Thank you, Brian. 
Okay, um, next one. This is from John. John always has great questions. When it comes to a full body move, like a deadlift, how does tonal strength score measure my lower, upper, or core strength score? Like, where does that factor in? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so behind the scenes on every single movement, we have um, data on how much each movement requires each muscle. So for example, my bench press is gonna require predominantly my chest. It's gonna require some shoulder, some tricep, some forearm and like a tiny bit of like glutes to make sure I'm stable on the bench. Um, so we have uh, logic that takes that information and organizes each movement into muscle groups. So for example, on bench press, it's just gonna be in my chest. Um, for something like deadlift, we're gonna look at the muscles that are used most for that lift. And when we calculate your score for that, we're gonna assign it to the right family. So for deadlift, that would be, I believe, glutes and hamstrings. Got it, thank you. Okay, yeah. oh, muscle breakdown. Um, okay, question from Anne. There we go. What are some situations that would lower your strength score? How many low weight workouts, for example? I mean, this might be a little bit nuanced and complicated, but let's see let's see what Taylor's got. Yeah, so your strength score can go down, right? Like if it's gonna be accurate, people's strength can go up and can go down. Um, so generally speaking, if there's consistent workouts where you're lifting lower weight than you had previously, um, your score will probably go down just a little bit. Um, granted, we do um, make sure we design the algorithm to try to account for things like warm up sets. So if I just do, I'm having a chest day and I want to warm up just by doing one set of bench press really light, um, we have some filters in there and some intelligence to try to filter these out and try to understand that this isn't my actual strength doing bench press and I'm just warming up. Um, it's a bit tricky, right? It's very easy as a personal trainer to be in the gym and see that someone's warming up with just the bar. Um, but it's a bit different on tonal. We have to make some assumptions there. So we have some uh, designs in there to account for this, like warm-up sets. And generally speaking, if you're steadily lifting lower weight than you had maybe in the previous you know, handful of workouts, then your score could go down a little bit. So in an instance of maybe you get an injury off tonal or something, and then you come back and you dial down the weight for a while on that specific movement, that, or those movements that impact that muscle, your strength score might go down. Right, and that's I think that's- Went down. Yeah, I think it's fair, right? If I, if I have an injury to my shoulder, for example, I wouldn't expect my strength score to stay the same for my shoulders right. if I wasn't as strong. And Tonal's not trying to be mean or judge you, we promise. <laughs> Taylor's not back there laughing at you. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, this is a question from William that I want to find. Okay. Okay. He said, William Santa said, can you comment on whether tempo is, will become a factor? And so for everyone listening, tempo is how the speed at which you lift. So up for three, down for four or whatever. Um, it seems that the faster, fastest tempo generating more reps are more likely to generate the PRs and increase the score. Yeah, so there's a lot to, to get at here. Um, currently, tempo or sort of the speed of your reps does not factor into strength score. Um, I think from a like fitness science perspective, right, if I'm trying to get as many reps as possible, I may sacrifice form and have the fastest tempo possible. But I think you're really sacrificing strength. You're sacrificing like actual muscle engagement if you're not taking the proper time during like, the eccentric portion of the lift. Um, so I think it's important to do that. Um, if you are really focusing on speed and you want to be as fast as possible during the concentric phase, you're going to really see gains on the power side of things. You may hit a power PR. Um, but for right now that we're measuring pure strength, I don't see um, tempo or speed necessarily factoring into it. Right. And I would, I would say that in the long run, say you're always trying to go as fast as you can, you might not build as much strength as someone who's really slowing down, connecting, focusing on their form and the muscle engagement. And so they might be able to get stronger and their strength score might react to that in the long run. Is that, is exactly. that right? Exactly. Yeah, hundred percent. Thank you. <laughs> Justin said, what do you mean that his question sounds like that? I promise I'm not a nerd. Oh, okay, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I'm gonna try to get to one more. We are quickly running out of time. Um, people, this is a lot of questions coming in about strength score, I love it. Um, Aaron asked, will the new benchmarks, how much stronger you are than the tonal community change as the tonal community gets stronger? We touched on this one, but he's talking specifically about benchmarks. Mm -hmm. so maybe it's a little bit different. Um, will yeah. the new benchmarks change as the tonal community gets stronger? 
Yeah, this is a really good question. So say we had a hundred really strong members joining the community. Which we um, do all the time. All the time, every week. Um, so. Your strength score is not gonna change, but as these distributions, they show where you stack up against all tonal members. If we have new members and they, it changes the distribution, your percentage may change, right? Like your percentage could go from you're stronger than 75% of members down to 74%, even though your score didn't move because we're comparing you to now a stronger um, group of members. Got it, that makes sense. Sorry, I was just looking at questions <laughs> while answering that. <laughs> That's why I need a producer, man. <laughs> okay, I wanna get this one from Ashley. Okay, she said, sorry if I don't word this right. What changed in the algorithm to cause one body region to now be stronger than another? My upper body used to have a higher strength score than core, but now they have flip-flopped. That's a good question. So there's a lot has changed. Um, one of the biggest things is previously, we just looked at your PRs for each move over the previous six months, and that was it. Um, in the new algorithm, we're looking at, we're constantly taking what you've done previously and what you do in a new workout, and we're finding a way to combine those. If you show us that you're stronger, we're really gonna listen to that sign. If we see that your new workout is maybe a little bit lighter, we're gonna make note of it, but we're not gonna just necessarily like plummet your score. Um, so that's one change that could have led to that. I think the other one is reorganizing how, um, how the movements are organized into these muscle groups, which are then organized into your body regions. So previously um, we had, didn't have muscle groups sort of under the hood. We had different ways of organizing movements. In this new one, we've shuffled movements around and some of that could have um, led to changes in scores um, as well as now we have, you know, every single on trainer move is factored into strength score. Um, so there's a, a lot of moving parts that could have led to some of those flip-flopping a little bit. Okay, Ashley, I hope that helps. I'm gonna ask one more question, last question from Dale. Um, let me find it on here. Here we go. Is there a general guideline regarding the relationship for each of the individual strength scores? For example, if there's a significant variance between scores? Yeah, this is a good question. I I don't think necessarily there's a good rule of thumb and Kate, you can chime in here too. Um, you know, some, some members we're gonna have really balanced strength scores. You're gonna have very similar upper body, lower body core. Um, for someone who's, you know, coming from cycling and they've been riding a bike their entire life, they're probably going to have a lower body that's much stronger. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily say that, like, balance is the general guiding principle, right? If you have a really strong lower body, it doesn't necessarily mean that your upper body is lagging behind. You need to catch up and your lower body needs to be, your upper body needs to be a thousand as well. Um, so I don't have necessarily, like, rules of thumbs for body region scores, I think. Um, you could maybe make the case for muscle group scores, like in my upper body, I may want to have my muscles be about the same strength. Um, but again, I could be someone who just has really strong shoulders, for example, like from my previous weightlifting experience or from my work or whatever it is. Um, we're going to have some folks that do have imbalances and I think that's completely okay. That's a good point. I think my, my lower body is in like the thousand something and my upper body is in like the six or 700. And that's just the way I'm built. It's way the way my genetics are. I've got a lot more going on down here than up here. So uh, mine will probably never be balanced. I'd have to do go big or go home like every day for the rest of my life, which is not happening. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I don't know that I have like a specific formula for that either. But that's a really great, great question, Dale. And I'd be curious to hear what all the coaches have to say. So if you're watching, chime in if you'd like. Um, thank you, everyone everyone so much. We are at time. Wow. That was some great conversation. Great questions about strength score. We might have to do a part two, Taylor. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for working for the last eight months. So, so, so hard on um, making these enhancements to strength score and for listening to our community, for listening and reading every single post that I sent to you. Um, we really appreciate all of your time and effort. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me on. This was great. Of course. Okay, stay on. I'm just going to pull you down for a second. Um, and everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. Next week, I am off um, for the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. So no tonal talk next week, but we'll be back the following week. I hope everyone has a wonderful Thanksgiving. Um, I'll be on in the group, just no tonal talk. So have a wonderful evening. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching and um, enjoy your night. <laughs>